there's a whole lot of people out there that don't like cold brew coffee. And tasting some of the brews, I can see why. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make cold brew coffee that doesn't suck. Come on, let's get into it. Hi, it's Paul here from the Coffee Science and Education Center. Now let's clear something up. Is it cold drip or cold brew? There's one really big difference. A cold drip tower looks a bit like a distilling tower and you've got to adjust the drip little bit by little bit and watch it for hours to make sure it drips consistently. And in my honest opinion, the coffee doesn't come out that good. It can be a little bit meaty and not very clean. What we're talking about today is cold brew, where you grab the coffee, immerse it in water and allow it to infuse. It's simple, cheap, and very easy to repeat on a day-to-day -day basis. Now to make cold brew, you're going to need four things. A grinder, a brewer, water, and of course, the coffee. Now to some extent, the variety of coffee that you use will depend on how you use it. Sure, an espresso blend can make good concentrate, but if you're going to serve it up black, I would recommend a filter roaster coffee. There are literally dozens of brewers out there to make cold brew. If you're a do-it-yourself person and you want to do it at home, even a stock pot and a filter bag or a cheesecloth will get you there. Today, we're going to focus on the toddy brewer. It's where I started making cold brew coffee and it's the one I love the most. So let's get started. Grab your toddy cold brew device and wet the filter. Pop it in the groove in the bottom. Now don't forget to put your plug in the bottom because once you pour water over the top, it can get really messy. The toddy also comes with an optional paper filter. The toddy works with or without this, but I recommend using it as it's going to allow you to extract more from your coffee and it makes cleanup at the end a hell of a lot easier. For a full batch, we're going to weigh out 400 grams of coffee. Grind the coffee on a coarse setting. Generally, I find somewhere between filter and plunger is a really good size. Measure out two liters of filtered water and pour it slowly over the grounds. Try to wet them as evenly as possible. If you're using the paper filter, stir the grounds to make sure there aren't any dry bits. Now something to be aware of, if you're not using the paper filter, then don't stir the coffee. The fine grounds can block the filter. Trust me, at the end, it's not fun. Cover the brewer and leave it at room temperature for 20 to 24 hours. The next day, remove the plug and place it on the decanter to drain. Pop the airtight seal on the decanter and store it in the fridge for up to 14 days. Now I've got our concentrate, the best bit, it's time to serve it up. For a basic black cold brew, take a chilled glass. Add some ice and pour one part cold brew concentrate and then one to two parts cold water. Of course, you can adjust the amount of cold water depending on your coffee and your own preference. And for milk iced coffee, the same thing, but we substitute the water for milk. Take a chilled glass, add some ice and pour one part cold brew concentrate, then two parts milk or whatever milk alternative you want. If you want to get a little bit fancy, there are heaps of other options for your cold brew. You can serve it with ice cream, blended, you can even serve it in a martini or a cold brew in a granny. We've got heaps of recipes on our website that you can check out right now. Just follow the link. That's all from me. Hit me up with any questions you have in the comments section below. Until next time, stay cool.